Um, welcome to the STEM Professional Chat podcast by Ashim Kher. The purpose of this podcast is to bring career stories from science, technology, engineering, and mathematics background people, the, especially the STEM professionals from academia, industry, and nonprofit who undertook non traditional career path in their career journey. And we hope that our, our career journey discussion with these professionals will help you and other several other students to craft their own career journey uh, in their life. So today I am Dr. Pawan and joined by my colleague Dr. Mansi Apte. Uh, we are the host and we have an our, our esteemed guest, Dr. Shara Hadar Iqbal. Uh, Shara uh, is trained as a researcher in life sciences and is currently a communications um, and public engagement practitioner in India. She holds a PhD in biochemistry from University of Oxford, UK, and was a postdoctoral research fellow at the Scripps Research Institute, USA. Till recently, she was serving as a communication and public engagement lead at India, India's one of the largest funding agency, that is DBT Belcom Trust India Alliance. Uh, currently, she serves as an advisory and con- in consultant capacity for several international and national organizations across the globe. Also, she is the lead for uh, Superheroes Against Superbugs, uh, uh, tailored towards engaging with young people in India on antibiotic resistance. And all, uh, in addition, she is a country lead at Planet Diwalk 991, a COVID inspired international participatory art project. So, with that, uh, we welcome Shara uh, in our virtual studio. Welcome, Shara. Thank you so much for inviting me, Pavan and Mansi. Very pleased to be here. <laughs> yeah, so thank thank you so much. Uh, so, would you mind kind of sharing your career journey in brief? Sure, sure. Um, so, uh, I, like you mentioned, I uh, started my journey in uh, science uh, at, I mean, of course, I did my undergrad from Delhi University in chemistry honors, and then I went on to do my master's and PhD from Oxford uh, in biochemistry, and then I went on to do my postdoc at uh, Scripps Research Institute, and uh, and it was actually at Scripps uh, that I, you know, uh, encountered some very interesting science outreach and science engagement uh, events and uh, I also saw how uh, you know researchers uh, would engage with philanthropists to to you know to help them understand and appreciate uh, what is that they're doing and how their funding would help them uh, uh, you know do do, their, do the do this research and so that you know this engagement with the non-science public uh, really fascinated me and really kind of opened my eyes to a whole new world and 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 I realized that you know not only was it fun for researchers to kind of talk to people and tell them about their research but uh, it was also I realized that I was learning a lot and I was growing a lot as a researcher uh, through those interactions and um, and so you know I was constantly thinking of what I will do uh, when I you know go back to India because that was a plan all along I, I was very clear that I will you know after my postdoc will go back to India but I wasn't sure you know what kind of opportunities uh, were available at that point and of course you know now you have so many uh, platforms you have this you know wonderful series that you're doing where you know people can find out what they can do after their uh, or, you know what they can do with their degree in science but at that point I really didn't have any you know resources and I, I probably didn't really look around much either that so that's probably my fault too um, so uh, while I was there I kind of was quite um, uh, I was sure that I want to kind of move into science engagement, but I wasn't sure what that career path would look like in India or for that matter, even in the US at that point, I really wasn't sure. Um, so I just, you know, I, I saw the uh, saw that India Alliance had advertised this for this position and I was following um, India Alliance quite keenly because I realized it was a very 
different organization it was operating very differently uh, and uh, and it was it was not uh, you know a government organization it was independent so it was doing things which were uh, quite unusual for india and quite out of the box so i was looking at opportunities there and uh, and then they advertised for this position i applied for it and because i had done uh, a lot of kind of science outreach science communication type of work during my phd and my postdoc i kind of you know fit the bill for them at that point uh and um, so so yeah so I, i i guess and then i you know they they offered me the position and rest as they say is history and um, and so i worked at india alliance for 6 years and only back in april i i decided to hang my boots there and and kind of enter the uh independent consulting space which i have no idea about uh but but i'm i'm, I'm you know experimenting and figuring out uh, and it's fun it's it's quite interesting and exciting uh times uh, also in india to do science engagement so yeah that's been that's my journey in a nutshell for me so i i have a follow up question about uh just your role at dbt india alliance um was it hard to transition from you know completely academic focused research institute i know you said that you did get involved in a lot of outreach and but that was sort of still on the periphery you were still doing your yeah. postdoctoral research and now you were thrown into a position where you know you're supposed to look at the screen and probably attend meetings and take notes and talk to people on completely different level understanding right. level interest level so how was that transition what did you have to get training for or and what did you already sort of had training for but you didn't realize it before so i didn't have any training i i should really put a disclaimer here and i should also put a disclaimer that uh you know my journey was unique is unique and i think all our journeys are unique so uh you know i made choices uh, the choices i made um uh, you know i could make those choices because of my circumstances and where you know my background uh, it's not necessary that another person would be able to make the exact same choices to get to where i am so um so but I, so when i made that transition first of all i don't know if i really at that point i don't think i really uh, thought of it as a transition i thought of it as okay you know i'm doing this i've enjoyed doing research now let me try something new and uh, i i guess the biggest uh, so i didn't have any training uh, you know to do uh, this job i i learned on the job and um, uh, i guess uh, what i definitely tried to do was leverage the skills that were needed for this uh, for this job maybe amplified them a bit more uh, you know maybe they were dormant when i was a researcher and i kind of had to kind of bring the bring those skills out bring that kind of working style out when i uh, you know joined this uh, position but i had no training really uh, to begin with but you know i think that's changing a lot i think today um if you are a fresh phd uh, with no absolutely no relevant experience getting landing a job like this will be hard uh, and because there is there are so many people who have relevant experience who got that kind of exposure to science engagement science outreach while they have been in their phd or postdoc so and of course there are uh, the professionals who decided to you know move out uh, of science after their masters and you know they they took up science communication engagement so you kind of competing with those people who have relevant experience and training so so yeah so i guess if 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 you know if you can't have uh, you know you can't replicate my journey today basically <laughs> so <laughs> so to add to that i i always think about this um uh, uh idea of who gets to call themselves as science engagement practitioner because um i work with a lot of people i do communications myself i do engagement myself but i'm still hesitant to call myself you know that practitioner because my practice is dependent on my experience and i don't have a training in engagement so is there a training for getting into public engagement especially for let's say indian students at domestic level or do you know any coursework that they can do to you know sort of spot put themselves on that one step over the rest of the crowd yeah so unfortunately i mean first of all that's a really good point and that's something that i struggle with a lot i 
uh i don't like labels first of all because then it kind of inhibits you and restricts you so you can't do anything other than that uh so i uh, also was a bit hesitant about calling myself something but i had to because of you know you have to when you're applying for jobs you have to call yourself something and when you introduce yourself to people you have to call yourself something so i guess it was more of that uh but i, I guess uh oh. in terms of training unfortunately we don't have any courses in india at the moment uh, that will really train you for the job you may have workshops here and there you know two or a three day workshop but i don't think we have uh, you know long term uh, sorry uh, co- courses that will kind of train you for the job and um, but of course there are courses available in the uk uh, and also in the us i guess and and other european countries uh, but for that of course you'll have to you know get a scholarship or you'll have to support yourself i i mean i don't know how that works really um, in terms of funding but uh, there and right now in india we don't really have many courses but uh, you know we, we we people like us in the country are thinking of how we could develop these courses how we could provide more systematic training and you know to people who are interested in entering the space uh, so they are also more effective and more efficient so you know the times of trial and error and figuring your way out uh, in this space are kind of over or are getting over now because like i said there is there's a lot of there are a lot more people in in you know who are who are uh, aspiring to these kind of roles in the country so and also i think we do need to uh, professionalize this space in the country for it to be become a more legitimate credible uh, uh space sector and so i think for that also we need to uh have training courses uh, that will build this capacity in the country so yeah, it, was this one of the impetus for uh india science festival you think like just educating people uh increasing awareness about uh informal sort of engagement space yeah yeah i think uh one of the objectives of india science festival is to build this kind of uh capacity and also to lend a more kind of put a spotlight on science engagement uh, as a professional field and so this is something that we are going to explore in the times to come so this was obviously not done explicitly in in you know the previous editions but in uh the editions or in the, in the festivals that we are planning now we are looking we're going to look at science communication public engagement in a more through more professional lens through the lens of research and practice and mm-hmm. so that's what we are hoping to do through ISF that that's really good to know uh you know and this is so encouraging for i think for people especially in current time when the the jobs itself is low and then you know, people are waiting for it while they can diversify their you know the the areas so yeah so with that i i had you know maybe viewers would be interested to know more about your you know job and day to day responsibility at welcome Tra- um welcome trust dvt alliance and mm-hmm. because it's a closed space i don't think everybody knows what's going on in there what do you do like if you're working at a job and, yeah. and so you want to some elaborate on that um yeah so um i joined india alliance uh when it was only about 4 5 years old and i was also the first public engagement officer at this organization so i had to kind of really build my uh you know job description and uh, create my work basically so initially i and it was also a very small organization so sorry, sorry so the reason why i mentioned the that it was only 5 years old is because it was very new it was very young at that time also and we had a very small team that was um, you know looking after a lot of programs and not a very unique programs uh in the country so i was um, so i got you know i used to get pulled into a lot of things i you know at at india alliance but primarily i focused on setting up the external communications research communications and public engagement uh, portfolio for uh, for for the organization and um and also uh, i worked on various skill building capacity building workshops that india alliance anchored and so these were science communication workshops these were uh, workshops for medical students who would like to take up uh, research as a career 
and uh, and then also leadership workshops for uh, you know mid early to mid career uh, researchers so these were some of the workshops that you know i uh, used to look after and uh, and in, in addition to of course you know the the usual um, uh, communications for the organization be it on social media or, or you know in print digital uh, media whatever so i had to kind of uh, do a whole lo- lot of that so initially i was only you know a one woman army but uh, after a few years i i got a colleague and then we you know got more colleagues and we became a team so when i left india alliance uh, there was a communications and public engagement team and 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 so so I, you know that itself is a is a really encouraging and promising sign uh you know for for india and i hope that uh, other organizations would also kind of you know follow uh, that and and dedicate have dedicated staff and personnel uh who look who are working in communications and public engagement yeah so uh, just a, a prelude to that one uh, so when you say like public engagement then people may think is this is like moment you see public and engagement that you're going to work in like a politician you're going to give lectures and speaking with public uh, does it that's the same in in your job or it was more of you know sitting in office and 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 communicating ideas or information to the public from me like whether it was in person or whether it was through through the channels of communication yeah no so it was a combination of both so you know there was a there was a phase of planning and strategizing you know what is that you want to do and how are you going to go about doing it what's your objective and then you have the uh, phase or uh, of of implementing it so in that that implementation is where you have to go out there and and talk to people and engage with them uh, you know bring different uh, actors together uh, so you you know i i actually i would call myself a connector you know i and and this is also a term that uh, welcome you know has uh, start has recently uh, kind of uh, introduced is you know the role of connectors who kind of connect science to society and uh, and so i think that's basically what my role used to uh, be is there was a, a whole lot of thinking planning and then going out there and implementing and then evaluating whether what i did was effective or or not and then kind of going back to the drawing table and working on the next no oh, interesting yeah yeah um so i know you said that you were the first public engagement officer in that capacity so sort of like you didn't have anybody to rely on yeah uh, and uh, you had to learn everything on the job but is there like a particular memory of you which you can share with us like that was the most challenging you felt like why did i transition out of you know that secured <laughs> research environment where you know i had colleagues to think about and shout at and like you know troubleshoot and now i have to figure everything on my own was there a point where I mean I while I was the first and the only person in my team for the longest time I uh we we used to work very closely you know the you know everyone in the organization because we were such a small team uh and I did have very nice colleagues who would give me feedback ideas and you know would give lend me a shoulder to cry when needed but um I mean I don't remember any very specific challenge but I think a challenge that not only me but other people who take who who uh, uh taken up uh, science communication and engagement after their uh you know phd postdoc what they have encountered is that it doesn't get recognized so i think that was initially what i faced was that there was no real recognition for what i was doing and uh, and there really like you said there was no precedent so even in india at that point i didn't have any examples or or people that i could look up to or see that okay you know they are going through the same kind of problems that i am i, I have and uh, so there was really uh, no community at that point today of course you have we have a thriving community and you know this uh, it's it's wonderful but at that point i didn't really have that kind of community support externally or internally of course internally i had support of my colleagues uh so i i don't think i think the only challenge that comes to mind uh is i think just building or making a case 
for science engagement that this is important and um, and that you know it needs to be recognized as much as anything else that we're doing in the organization so i guess that was something so i had to make i think i guess i maybe i didn't do it aggressively or 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 you know very kind of explicitly but i kind of persevered and and continued to do work that kind of inspired the leadership to say that oh yeah this is good and this is impactful and this is uh, you know something that we should continue doing or supporting at the organization so um so yeah i, I guess that would be the biggest challenge is, is lack of recognition and i guess the the biggest quality you got from your scientist days was the perseverance right exactly <laughs> exactly absolutely absolutely okay. yeah you have been to you know the uk science scene because you've spent time at, in oxford a long time and then you've seen a little bit of us science scene as well especially at yeah. scripps and yeah. then you went back to india and the science in india from the stage where it was just getting that recognition to now a full thriving scene and yet a lot more to be done mm-hmm. so are there like key differences between how the science is perceived in these different countries or how people engage with science in these different countries do you feel it's different for different demographics and one is simpler than the other mm. you know i don't want to speak for the whole of uk or the whole of us because i i think my experience was very limited absolutely uh, yeah, yeah to oxford and to scripps and uh, but i i think if i just kind of compare those ecosystems with perhaps a few that i know in india is that i think uh, there is um i mean science is cons- is done very professionally in those ecosystems you know it's not something um it's not considered as a very uh part time chalta hai type of a, <laughs> you know i don't know i was i've struggled part time right yeah way. yeah um and you know people get there's very little hierarchies of course that's something that was very very stark the difference was very stark that in these places you don't see a whole lot of hierarchies maybe there is some bit of hierarchy but not as uh, explicit as you have in in india and uh, that makes science a lot more uh, participatory you know it's not just one person's idea but it's like a team work and uh, so i i think culturally the three places are very different of course like the way uh, research is done and perceived and is is very very different uh again with science engagement i would say that uh i i think i was i mean in oxford it's an academic institution and I mean, you know it's difficult to say everyone who's there is interested in 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 scholarship so i think um in india the biggest challenge i guess in uh, to help people appreciate sciences because there is this 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 fear of oh i don't understand science i didn't like science when i was in school i didn't understand it i don't like science and so they don't want to engage with science but they're okay for their children and for, you know for for their for them to engage in science so I, i saw that a lot in india whereas in scripts when we used to do these uh, sound science outreach events in the malls i would see the parent would be as interested and as engaged as a child is and it's so that i felt you know that was one difference i noticed in uh, you know between that place and and you know my practice here in in india uh, but I, i guess research is definitely the research culture is very different i think we we are not uh, we we are still very immature in in uh, you know when it comes to research culture good research culture good research practices in india uh compared to these these places it, well i mean i hope the unprecedented covid pandemic has taught all of us to take research seriously <laughs> right yeah. um uh, so coming back to a little bit of your research background maybe you can tell us um uh, what one thing you thought um uh, you should have learned during your you know academic or research career that would have helped you uh, transition into something non academic or you mm. would ad- advise newer generation to learn like in terms of a skill or you know some sort of experience that they should have 
Wow, that's a really Especially good if like they are trying to be in science communication world beyond you know just doing uh, uh, a one hour workshop or one day whatever seminar yeah. series can they do is there is there an opportunity for people to do like maybe i'm thinking internships or something um, oh yeah uh, that we yes i think there are a lot of internship opportunities now and and uh, and there are i mean social media twitter is generally buzzing with these kind of opportunities so i think it's i would suggest that if you are uh, averse to social media i i suggest to get on social media just for professional reasons uh, and and just to kind of scan the scan the twitter world or the facebook uh, world to see what kind of opportunities are there on linkedin of course uh, so i think um, what i would also i guess suggest people who are interested in transitioning out of academia is really spend some time understanding doing background research about that field that you want to enter you know read their literature read you know what is the fundamental essence of the the field the sector you want to enter and why is that you are interested in doing this you know just because it's glamorous or it is you know sounds interesting or is it that you have the skills and you have the right kind of interest and that's why you want to get uh into uh into that field so you should you should enter a field a new field for the right reasons is is what i would uh yeah you know that, that's very much valid you know like most of people in pandemic are confused that what they are good at and what they're going to do like is 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 from bachelor level forget about phd and master yeah. students are not in right yeah. state like we're going to do so oh, yeah. one thing i yeah one thing i wanted to ask you know if you had to analyze it back to your career and mm. then try to try to mirror to the you know current level what you know skill sets you think that mostly phd's or postdoc or masters maybe may already have which they mm. can leverage to get into such roles which we like public engagement communication like what would be the key skills you can highlight and say that okay if you have this you should think of you know trying it um i guess in public engagement the most important skill is or quality you should would should have is of empathy and to be able to listen because i realize that you know what what um, what helped me engage with people or or you know build partnerships or relationships was that you know i kind of approached it with a lot of empathy and that i wanted to listen and i wanted to learn i guess that's uh, uh, the right approach to take but in terms of you know for, uh, the skills that we learn i think project management is grossly undervalued Uh, and in phd and i think it is hugely important when you enter any field i mean even in research you know you do need to be a good project manager uh i think time management is also something that is essential very essential i guess more essential than it is in the academic world so uh you have to be you have to have to prioritize know how to prioritize your work and how to you know manage your time effectively and so as to you don't burn yourself out or you don't leave everything to the last minute and then because there are a lot of deadlines definitely more than than you would uh, encounter in your academic life so i think time management is something i would really impress upon and I, i because i've noticed a lot of people who come from uh, academia are a little uh lacks about time management because you know it's how we you know the thing is urgent <laughs> really um so yeah so that's that's one thing i feel that if you're able to manage your time well if you're ma- able to kind of strategize your work effectively that you know starting from planning to how you're going to deliver it and how you're going to measure it exactly how we do it you know in a lab you design an experiment so you know just use that framework for a different setting basically yeah. and i think that that really and troubleshooting so a lot of times you know you encounter a problem or encounter a challenge you use the same sort of cognitive uh machinery to troubleshoot yourself out of that problem so um and we do that more than we do anything else in a lab or in a research setting so i think those are some of the things that we should really kind of uh, amplify and define uh if, if respect to which 
field you want to enter unless you obviously want to become an artist then that's a different <laughs> matter altogether so i mm. think that, that's a yeah. really a good advice um, so coming uh, maybe switching gears from here mm. about uh, could you please tell us about your uh, i think two of the major initiative i see the superheroes against super bugs and die walk 91 Uh, mm. If you could give a little glimpse of about it, because it's ongoing, maybe people may get interested if they are, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah, it. and we so briefly also spoke is, about yeah. the science festival. Maybe people who might not be familiar sure. with, you can talk about that too. Sure, sure. I, I mean, so Planet Devok is uh, is uh, uh, over. I mean, we are done with uh, the first phase of the project. If we get more funding, perhaps you know we may be able to do Planet Devok 2.0. Uh, but uh, Sci- Superheroes Against Superbugs um, was an initiative that we started back in 2018, and it was just a few of us who felt that uh, AMR is becoming a huge problem in the country. Uh, but people, uh, did, even in science, you know, I would say didn't really. understand the gravity of the situation and how uh, it that how it was such an urgent need and we need to address it so we started thinking of how we could raise awareness around amr and we felt that you know we were also thinking of audiences because that's the first thing you have to do as a communicator is ask yourself who are you going to engage or communicate to so when we were thinking of audiences we thought that why not work with young children because not only uh you know we, are they really creative uh, uninhibited in their approach to life and their you know when it comes to generating ideas uh but it's also a very uh, relevant problem for them because uh, you know they they are going to be um facing and and you know this 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 big global health challenge uh, in the times to come so uh we thought they will feel invested in it as as much as they would probably feel invested in climate change and you know other uh, kind of uh, problems so uh, and of course you know we were really wanted to harness the creative uh energies of 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 young children to also help us understand how we should be framing amr because amr is a very complex issue it's, it has it's very multifaceted it has the many factors that that drive uh, that are driving amr so and and there are different uh, sectors and different individuals and actors who are maybe uh, responsible for the for the spread and we also as you know users of antibiotics are inadvertently inadvertently uh driving this you know problem so uh, so anyway so we thought that you know we this will be a good partnership we will learn and the, hopefully the you know the young children will learn about the problem and they'll spread uh the message uh, around so so that's really where it you know where it uh, came from and the reason why we call it superheroes against superbugs is first of all we wanted to make it uh we wanted the project and workshops to sound fun like something that the kids will kind of like uh, like to participate in and you know kids also like the idea of superheroes so that's really the pop culture reference we were going after and uh, and we also wanted to kind of convey the idea that all of us can be superheroes in this fight against amr it's not just the medical professionals or the scientists uh, or the government but all of us have a role to play so that's why we decided to call it superheroes against uh, superbugs um so that's really yeah so that's very really and so what we do in this as part of this program is organize workshops for young children and we get them to kind of express their ideas after they have understood the problem understood the science of amr so to kind of generate comics or or uh, say uh, uh, a theater uh, performance or anything any kind of creative expression to convey the problem of of this and to spread awareness about uh, amr in their uh, circles and um, so that's where sas is and so it's like an ongoing project and you know where we're uh, kind of we're going to launch our next phase shortly so your viewers can follow us on uh, twitter and 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 of course get involved if if you know if they can um so planet devok 91 it was it was an international 
project so we work with uh, teams in south africa and the uk and and planet vivo 21 really was a brainchild of uh, two people based in the uk called sara kenny uh, and and bella starling and uh, they got together and say that hey you know young people uh, and their experience of the pandemic is is uh, has has somewhere uh, gotten lost and we don't know what they're going through how they're making sense of the pandemic so why not uh create these comics that will reflect their experience that will reflect their aspirations and their ideas about how we can build back better or how we could have handled the pandemic better to begin with so so it's a science fiction kind of uh you know story and uh so we worked so we kind of worked uh with young adults in india south africa and uk to kind of co-create the story so some of the stories in the comics are actually written by young adults uh and uh and the stories are basically informed by the conversations we had with young adults as part of this project so it's it's a it's um quite a you know the whole whole process was very participatory and we wanted to make sure that you know their ideas and their references were reflected uh in the comic so so that's planet devok but of course you know we started off thinking that we'll create these comics uh uh but uh, you know it, the project ended up being a lot more than just the comics you know we we built uh, a lot of uh, you know the, the different country teams um developed very you know good understanding of how uh, people in other countries are are experiencing young adults in other countries experience the experiencing the pandemics uh, there were some challenges that were similar but there were some challenges that were you know that some of the young adults had not even thought of because their contexts are so different uh, so you know that was a very kind of enriching uh, moment and enriching experience for uh, the young people who were part and then they interviewed a lot of experts and i think that also added to their uh, you know knowledge base and it also helped them make sense of the of the pandemic better so yeah so we had comics at the end of it we had a lot of very good films that the young people produced as part of this project we had some fantastic artwork uh that uh, that some of the young people in india and south africa and also uk produced as part of this project so yeah so the pro- project is officially closed but uh, there's a website so you you know anyone interested in finding out more about this project can go to that website and and find out more uh, and also read the comics if they're interested and we translated the comics also in uh, isi hosa which, which is uh, south african uh, language and in hindi and the translation was also done by young adults so you know that was interesting uh, it was a very interesting uh, exercise as well and finally the india science festival uh is uh, as you know the next edition is being planned for january 2022 uh and uh, we are in the process of curating a program we are consulting with you know a lot of people to make sure that you know we we produce a program uh that kind of reflects the interests and aspirations of of you know our audience and uh, so we we are in the process of kind of putting the whole thing together there are going to be some competitions that will be launching next month uh one of which might be of interest to your viewers which is uh um uh, <laughs> talk your thesis so you know how do you kind of uh, talk about your uh, research in 10 minutes and uh, so that's a competition perhaps your you know some of the people watching this can uh, participate there's also a competition on presenting your project so a, a very cool science project that you might want that you might have developed or uh, and then you want to kind of present at the festival so there's going to be a competition around that and then there's a going to be a competition on science fiction writing um because i think science fiction is a great vehicle to you know get the science out there uh, in a very kind of interesting way so so this is going to be a science fiction competition and we'll have some pre festival events too uh, i can't divulge too many details right now but uh, <laughs> stay tuned basically so many exciting things happening i can't i can't yeah. wait to see what you guys put out and we will definitely provide links to all the projects you mentioned to all our viewers but we are coming to the end of our session and uh, maybe uh, we can do this rapid fire version so okay. not thinking very much the first thing that comes to your mind um, okay how about you tell us one key action that uh, is really required for building a better public engagement field in india 
one key uh, action what yeah okay. so maybe from the government or maybe from the sector itself but what do you want them to do what do you want them to work on first i think we need to uh, there are two things actually that have to go simultaneously one is we need to recognize this this uh, the need for science engagement and uh, formally recognize it and create spaces for uh, science engagement in the country and we have to also build capacity because if you're creating these spaces they need to be uh, they need to be people who will fill these spaces and will you know do the work i don't think we have that kind of capacity and that kind of professional capacity in the country so we have to kind of do both these things simultaneously uh, uh Uh, to to you know to kind of enhance or to build this ecosystem in in india wonderful uh who's the most difficult audience you have encountered so far <laughs> difficult audience hey no i can't say it <laughs> maybe um, i can give you two options like the kids sure. you were dealing with like no, younger adults no. versus maybe politicians <laughs> Yes, I, I definitely think grown-ups are a lot more difficult because they have formed ideas. Uh, they are quite rigid in their uh, in in the way they make sense of things or the way they think about certain things. So it's very difficult to cut through them. And uh, but I think I've had uh, the most. uh enjoyable times uh with young people and i'm not saying this for effect i mean i truly have learned a lot by working with young children and young people um so i would say that most typical audience would be older uh older people <laughs> for sure yeah <laughs> another thing I, i have for you is that if you would be, if you don't have to do this job what would be the second preference you would be doing oh <laughs> ah <laughs> If I wasn't doing this, I would. Uh, Is there an inkling of going back to academia <laughs> if this fails? <laughs> I, I mean, not to life science research, but I'm open to kind of pursuing research in social sciences because that's really where I am. Like I'm at the interface of natural sciences and social sciences. Yeah. So yeah, so I'm not averse to research at all. Uh, I guess you know that's been uh, my building block blocks. <laughs> uh, but um, I would think. you know my crazy answer would be that maybe i would be a creative professional maybe a filmmaker oh wow yeah, we need we need more of those yeah <laughs> in okay, science the for last, sure i yeah. might still be i might still go for <laughs> exactly absolutely yeah we we will definitely be one who would be watching that <laughs> oh great <laughs> and That's the so last funny. one if you yeah. were the superhero of your story what would be your superpower Ah uh, if I would be the superhero oh god it's going it's going to sound very cheesy but I would say empathy and kindness mm mm-hmm. I think that's that, that's needed that's needed in nowadays yeah I think kindness, very true. kindness it's it's an overused word I don't think we really understand what it means to be kind yeah. I don't think I know what it means to be kind but I want to kind of uh I want that as a superpower. I want to get yeah, there one day. That, that's really. We should all get. We should all aspire to be <laughs> superheroes with kindness yeah. as the yeah. magic that's wand a, power. The, the one thing I want to say: the kindness, you know, knowing is not enough. It has to practice. People know it, but nobody wants to practice it because that requires to give up, to give yeah. back, to give things which you have to detach yourself, right? From, Absolutely. From things. Absolutely. So yeah, that's Wonderful. really interesting. We had really a very immersive discussion today. And Thank we'll wrap you. up, wrap it now. Uh, so, if Thank viewers you. want to reach out to you and and kind of connect with you, what would be the better channel? Um, you know, you would prefer uh, to. Connect? They can drop me a message on any of social media platforms, uh, so Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, mm-hmm. and you can also, you know, if they reach out to you, they can you can share my email ID with them as well. So. Okay, fantastic. Thank you so much. Uh, so, I think with that, we will wrap it here. and it's been really amazing discussion i i said and i think we were surely going to benefit the young generation especially the masters and and bachelors and early phd's and thank you so much uh, for yeah, your you time for guys there i really yeah. enjoyed the chat as well and i wish all the chats were like this <laughs> you know light hearted and, and fun yeah thank you